So we uh, just finished talking about how you might get a torque on a coil that has a current going through it. If I have a coil here with a current going through it and I put this in a magnetic field, depending on the orientation of the coil, if I set it up just right, I can get a torque on that coil and cause it to rotate. I guess if the current's going this way, it'll rotate this way, maybe. And uh, if the current's going the other way, it'll probably rotate the other direction. Okay, cool. And uh, here's a practical application of that. Now we can measure currents. And I guess we can measure voltages as well. I want you to look in here. This is the workings of this volt ammeter. It's very nice, um, built with wood cabinetry. Oh, probably almost 100 years old at this point. But I want you to look inside here. You've got a coil this direction. And you've got a magnet there and a magnet there that's creating a magnetic field, probably pointing either this direction or that direction. I don't even know. But it is either left or right. There's also a spring right here. And so we've got green wire and black magnets on the side, a needle coming off of this coil. And if I cause this coil to feel a torque, the coil will go like it's in this orientation right here. It will go whoop like that. And that will show that there is either some voltage or some current depending on the way that I've got these knobs hooked up. So I draw a little sketch right here. And I want to point out to you. Here's what I want to say. I've got this sketch with the green wire and I didn't show the spring yet because I thought it would get cluttered. But there's a coil spring on here. The coil spring prefers to be in a certain orientation. It's probably ultimately hooked onto the needle and hooked onto something else, and it prefers to be right there. But if there's a torque on it, then it will move, I guess storing some energy in the spring, to right there, and then if the torque is gone, I guess the torque will be gone if I don't have a current going through the green wires. If the torque is gone, then it'll just go back to where it was. So that resets the, the uh, resets the ammeter and voltmeter. And uh, also, there's probably a little adjustment on these guys down here. There's probably a little screw adjustment, or I can turn it to change the na the natural orientation of that needle. So that's pretty cool too. So how could I make this be a more sensitive? galvanometer or ammeter, a very sensitive ammeter. Let's look at what that torque is made of. Torque is N times I times A times B times the sine of theta. So I could either have more loops of wire, and you notice those wires were thin. There are a lot of loops of wire right there. So I could increase that. I could increase the current. Well, that's just the meter doing its job. So that doesn't mean that I'd have a more sensitive meter. I'm getting more torque as I'm getting more and more and more current. Let's, let's make this a magnetic field pointing that direction for the sake of argument. And then um, I could also increase the area inside. So the bigger uh, my loops are, if I expanded those loops, I would make a more sensitive galvanometer. So if this were a smaller galvanometer, it wouldn't be quite as sensitive. I could also make a stronger magnetic field outside. And you can bet that in 1915 or something when they made that, they were probably using the best magnet technology available. Now we would probably make them with some neodymium stuff and uh, make it quite a bit stronger magnetic field. So all of those things are good. The one more thing that I could do that is independent of torque is I could make a longer needle. And there are some uh, beautiful machines that were made a long time ago with that, and I'll show you one of them now. Bye-bye. And finally, proof positive that I work in the best high school in the United States of America. You can talk all you want about fancy teachers, new additions to the building, but I present to you Big Bertha, the most beautiful galvanometer you have ever seen. Not only that, She's a lecture table DC Galvana volt ammeter. That's right. She can take care of any problem you got. Look at all those connections. See that? Look up there in the works. You can see it all right in front of you. You get a current running through that wire right there, through any of these contacts right here. That will create a, uh, well, force on those charges, and that needle will move. Look how long that needle is. Whoa! If that gets a tiny, tiny little torque on that coil in there, that needle will move a tiny bit, but you'll be able to see it because it's such a long needle. Check out the back side right here. She's got all those connections, so you can change the range. Look at the directions there. That's right, made in the United States of America and printed in metal. Big Bertha is the best galvanometer that you'll ever see.